alarm works, um, but the bulb doesn't. They guaranteed that it would work and now set up, um, but it's not. I'm going to call them, actually. That's going to be the first step. Okay, your stuff doesn't work. No, no, it didn't light at all. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Nice one. Thanks, Martin. Cheers, bye-bye. He's suggesting that we, the choke might have been knocked out of place. So the little white box I mm -hmm. need to pull that apart. Um, make sure all the connections are okay. And the choke is a little white tubular thing. Put it all back together. <laughs> back here, see if it works and give me a call if there's a problem. So Good, okay. That's I'll, good. I'll try. Yeah, it's a start. It, was, it wasn't disowning the problem at all. Yeah. It remembered me. That's good. Um, which is good. <laughs> Uh, I'll give it another go. Alright, nice one. Everything looks okay. Um, I'm just not so keen on <laughs> putting it all back in. Mm. And then if it doesn't work, pulling it all back out again. And... It turns out, I think, that the problem was with one of these thin little wires that connect the lamp. I checked it on mains power, um, actually at the train station the other day. And it worked. Um, I brought it home and checked it on the inverter, and that was working as well. Um, we've got the generator running at the moment, so I just wanted to check it on the generator as well. So I've got it connected at both ends. The connection previously felt uh, a little bit flimsy, but this feels much better. And then we've got it, the tube in the cardboard box, and that's uh, the packing packaging that it came in. And I'm going to leave it like that. I can see enough to know whether it's working, and I'm not going to leave it on for very long. You don't want to look at a UV lamp when it's running or have it exposed to your, your skin either. It can burn your skin and I guess burn your retina in your eye as well. And this is where the the warning and buzzer um, and light attaches to, but I've taken that out of the equation for this bit. I just need to flick the switch and see if it works. So making good sounds. Has the bulb lit? Yeah, and you can see the light through there. And the same down that end. So I'm pretty happy with that. Also pretty embarrassed that it was just that one little wire that was a little bit hard to see. I should have double checked everything. There you go, when you start getting tired and hangry you should stop <laughs> and slow down and come back to it later but anyway it's working which is great so all I need to do now is put this into the engine room connect it to the bulb which is already in situ um, and we're good to go okay so I've wired up um, or yeah connected the the UV filter with the bulb in situ to the electrical supply. I just need to flick the switch to see if the bulb will start. If it does, then I'm just going to disconnect one end to simulate the bulb not working, just to make sure that the alarm's still working. Okay, that did both. So, <laughs> the bulb's working, mm -hmm. and as it was powering up, in, in between the, the power on, power off, the alarm was working. So we know both are working. Um, and I can see that the bulb's on by the blue glow at the end. So that's brilliant. Now we need to start the pump, set the flow rate, and we're good to go. get the flow rate right and just let it run for maybe five minutes. Into the river? Yeah. Yeah. It's just out of the pump and the water's coming out through the hose, so that's a good sign. So it's running at about 21, 22 litres a minute, so I'm just going to tell Corey to lower it down. So it's kind of dancing around like 16.85 and 17.15 litres a minute. Yeah. So that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. It's rated for 52 litres. <laughs> I wish. Well, it is, um, and we're just providing up by three. So yeah. So we can cross one by the river out. 
better than Evian. <laughs> uh, here we go. You did it, baby. Yeah. Let's hope the tests come back okay. <laughs> Okay, testing day. <laughs> There's the sample. And these are the bottles. Just need to follow the instructions and put the right amount in each bottle. Some of them don't have anything in it. Some of them have got... This one's got sodium thiosulfate. Can't get too much of that. <laughs> sure. You have to put different amounts in different ones, did you say? Or doesn't that matter? Uh, this one I don't think it matters, but others <coughs> it does matter, yeah. Fill bottle leaving small air gap. I don't know what small is. Yeah. So that's small air gap. Mm -hmm. Looks small enough to me. No air gap, fill to overflow. Yeah. Do not overfill. I think it's not over full, I just hope it's not under full. Yeah. It's above the top line. That looks good. Fill leaving no headspace, and there's no headspace. And so we've organised a courier, and it has to get there within a day, basically, doesn't it? Within 24 yeah. hours is the idea. Yeah. yeah. So that they can get a proper result. So it should be two weeks before we get the results back that day. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Let's go. Massive and it's really heavy. <laughs> Not quite what I was expecting. I was expecting a pallet with wrapped in plastic or something. Yeah. If we can get it home, we've got some good plywood that we can use and some other firewood we can burn. Yeah. I'm just not sure how we're going to get it home. Yeah, we've just got here on the train. We're going to try and get it back either on a train or we were thinking cab, but not so much anymore. 150 kilos. Freight ticket said it was 150 kilos. Yeah. yeah. I think it's probably not far off. <laughs> mm. And Ollie's getting tired. Ollie's had enough, yeah. Haven't you, buddy? It's bedtime. <laughs> the guy from the kebab shop is trying to help fix our broken wheel. How do you feel, Aaron? <laughs> Failed battery pickup. Two men coming tomorrow instead. Mm. And right now we've got two hungry people and a baby who's tired and awake. Well, it could be raining. Well, you know, just hanging out, waiting for the men with the van, with our big crate. We couldn't get to Hartford this morning because our train was cancelled. Classic, of course, why not? But we did find our first recycling point, which is exciting, and they take everything, which is just a short walk from the boat, so that's a first. So we're just waiting here for them to arrive, aren't we? Have a look at the swans with their nest. Soon about the rubbish. 
There's Daddy over there. I think there's three eggs under there. Look, here they come. <laughs> Crazy. Just here would be perfect. The same day, a man with a crane turned up and delivered a cubic meter sack of logs and uh, just bumped them at the end of the towpath for me. <laughs> I have no idea how to get this home now. So with pram in one hand and a broken trolley piled high with wood in the other, there were many painful trips back and forward in the pouring rain. That is until Corey came home and we finished off the rest. Oh, New lithium batteries. Uh, comes the rain again. <laughs> uh. And a new project begins. Thanks for tuning in to Five Knots Cruising. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps us to get our video out to more viewers. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and ideas, so please drop us a line either on our Instagram page or YouTube.